what we're talking about today is financial exploitation. It's people taking advantage of each other, and we're seeing it more and more and more. But really, to make it have an impact, to, to, to tell you why it's important to me, it's because it's happened to my family. It happened, in fact, to my grandmother just a few years ago. So if you don't mind, I'll tell you kind of the story about my grandmother, but I have to start at the beginning to really tell the story properly. So my grandmother was born in 1924 out in Rising Star, Texas, out in West Texas. So she was the youngest of 13 siblings, and 1924 made her about six years old. That's all right. <laughs> when uh, she's about six years old when the uh, Great Depression hit. And so she had learned some rough lessons right from the beginning. She had to be very conservative <coughs> and um, and that kind of etched into her character for the rest of her life. So all of my memories of my grandmother were of her uh, shelling uh, green beans over a big basin and getting ready to can or going to Goodwill with her because that was her shop. She didn't want to spend full price. So I tell you all that about my grandma because just to let you know that she was a very conservative individual and she was very careful with her mother. So after my grandfather passed, uh, she got to a point where she needed some, some care. And so we had a, uh, a part-time caregiver come in. We looked into several different people and, and we had a really highly recommended caregiver come in. And within just a few months time, she started taking advantage of my grandma. Fortunately, my dad had been added on as power of attorney on, his, on the bank accounts, which is, a, which is a good idea for anybody to have somebody that you trust power of attorney. So he was able to watch these bank accounts and we started seeing things that didn't make sense. We started seeing purchases that an older lady wouldn't make. We started seeing purchases for tires when she didn't drive a car. You know, we started just seeing things that weren't adding up. And so uh, this is the only plug I'm going to make. It was First Financial down in, in Cleveland. I didn't even work for him at the time. Uh, but we went down there and talked to the banker. We're able to, because my dad had power of attorney, we were able to pull the bank statements and then look at that and then go to the retailers and make a case. So we ended up working with the Department of Public Services, the adult uh, uh, adult group, and we actually got a conviction against this lady. She was registered on the Texas Registry of, of uh, Misdeed is kind of how it's labeled, but basically she can never work with another elderly or a disabled individual in the state of Texas again. So she's out of the picture. And we thought, hey, that's a success. But we didn't really know. I mean, was that just one bad apple or what? Well, since I've been working here, we're seeing more and more of this financial exploitation. And it can take a range of forms. I'll go over that in just a minute. But that's why it's important to me because we saw it affect my family. And it was several thousand dollars that this lady took in just a matter of months. It wasn't enough to wipe out my grandma, but it had an impact, you know, and, and that in impact can be staggering and it can be huge in, in, with certain individuals. So just wanting to raise awareness. Um, as you guys go out there in the community, talk to your friends, talk to your families, tell this story again, tell, tell anybody you want about this, have them call me or, or call anybody at the bank and we'll tell the story. But we just want to spread the awareness for the community so that everybody's thinking about it makes it a harder community to attack. We don't want these fraudsters getting our money and, and, and preying on our on our community. So that's why we're here today. I'll kind of dive in. So what is financial exploitation? Mark kind of covered it, but basically it's the illegal or improper use of a person's funds, their property, or their resources. Now that's a real broad definition, but it's stealing. It's it's acting in bad faith. It's just it's it's any one of those type of things. So I'll kind of dive into what we're seeing at the bank, and unfortunately we're seeing more and more. So before I do that, uh, Mark mentioned that we're, we're kind of focused on the mature market. And the way we define our mature market is those 65 and above and their adult children. And the reason we're focused on that is because, well, there's a few reasons. First off, the mature market has the most money. You guys have spent a whole lifetime saving. And so when there's financial exploitation, they can take more money the losses are more significant than say a 20 year old just out of college. Second, um, opportunities for exploitation start to pop up around this time. You know, we, we have diseases such as Alzheimer's and dementia like my, like my grandmother had, or just changes in life situations, moving, all these types of situations where new people are coming into play, those are opportunities for exploitation. So among that, if there's people that are on fixed income that are in the mature market, 
that means that a loss hurts so much worse because there's you can't make that up. You're, you're behind the eight ball at that point. And so for all of those reasons, that's why the bank wants to focus in and educate uh, our mature market in our communities so you can be aware of it, so you can tell friends and family and colleagues uh, about what's out there. So I'll give you a couple statistics. First of all, uh, the most recent data that we have on this shows that in 2013, losses across the nation were about $3 billion, and that's, B, that's billion with a B. So it's a staggering amount of, of losses, and that's probably underreported because it's kind of, uh, nobody's proud that that happened. You know, I don't like to tell that story about my grandma, but it happened. And so that's just from the reported losses. It's probably much greater. Um, and that affects about one out of every five individuals that are over 65. That's about 7.3 million people in the U.S. each year. Um, the sad statistic is 60% of the time, that's the adult children uh, in the family that are actually committing the fraud against the, the mature market. So it's it's kind of trust, but, but be wary. If you don't trust them, don't put them on the account. Um, so how do they do this? How, how does financial exploitation happen? Well, there's a number of different ways, and I, I honestly couldn't name them all because they're always coming up with new ways to do it. But here's what we commonly see. Uh, it's telemarketing calls. If you get a phone call from somebody you don't know, asking mm -hmm. for information. Uh, home solicitors, people coming by, knocking on the door. Uh, could be people impersonating government officials. This is one we're seeing more and more. Uh, is anybody here on the internet? It's internet frauds taking off. And so that's becoming the newest growing one. Could be caregivers, like what would hap what happened with my grandmother. Could be relationships, online relationships, where they promise some affection if you can send some money. There's, it's just awful what's out there. So I'm gonna tell you a couple things to avoid, a couple things to think about as you're out there. Please tell your friends, family. Um, first off, uh, if you ever get a phone call from a bank or from a financial institution that's asking you to tell you, tell them your, your account number, that's a red flag. Don't ever give out your account number. A bank will never call you and ask for your account number. Now, if you call in, they may verify it, but if you call them, or if they call you, please be, ve be very guarded of that number. Um, lottery winnings. Has anybody ever received an email or, or some sort of a notice that you won a lottery that you've never entered, never been to? They, and it happened a lot out in Wise County. We gave this talk out in Wise County. The sheriff actually told me a story about an individual who was promised lottery winning. So they say, you won the Hawaiian lottery. You won $10 million. We'll send you the money, but first you need to send us some money to send it to you. So just $200 and we'll send you the money. This fella did it. And then it was, well, this came up. Now you need to pay some taxes on it. Just send us the money and then we'll pay the taxes. This fellow got taken for a hundred thousand dollars out of West County, and and it's sad. I mean, it, you go, how did that happen? But if you don't add up money, it just little bit by little bit, they got to the point where they were sending him a cell phone a week, and saying, just call us on this number, and that was still making them money. So once they have their hooks in people, it, it's awful. So watch out for lottery winnings. If you've never been to Hawaii. That'd be your first indication. <laughs> the other one is there is no Hawaiian lottery, so that's the other indication. Um, unexpected checks for deposit. This this is one that's really odd because you go, what is this? But it's a check that comes in that you're not expecting, and they're asking you to go deposit it and then send some back to them. So they may overpay for something. If you're selling something online or, or to somebody for a hundred dollars, they'll pay you two hundred. Send me fifty back. We'll both keep. We both make a little more. Well, really, that's a fraudulent check, and they're trying to create uh, the, the victim becomes part of the crime in that situation. So it's just a horrible, horrible deal. So if you ever get something that just doesn't add up, doesn't seem right, that's probably your red flag. Um, let's see what else. Random home inspections. Uh, if if you, your friends and loved ones have people claiming they're from the city to come in and do an inspection, the city needs to be calling ahead of time. If it doesn't seem right, if they have any sort of worry on that, have them make the phone call to the actual city and figure out if those people are legit before letting them in. We've had all kinds of issues with people uh, going in and doing repair work in an attic, and they're not doing any work. They're just charging for it and taking that money and running. So it's just it's just bad stuff. Um, here's the most recent one, and I think kind of one of the most despicable ones is 
phone calls about an emergency or about a loved one being in jail or in some sort of an accident. They've been doing that now. Well, they'll, they'll go on Facebook and they'll find out your grandkids or, or relatives' habits. Oh, they just went off on spring break down to Mexico. They'll call and say, hey, we know your daughter's down in Mexico. She just got in an accident. You need to send some money to, to get her through the hospital. Everybody loves their granddaughter, so you're going to send that money. But if you just pause and make the phone call, you can probably find out that that might be fraud. So it's just preying on people's uh, love for their families, you know, preying on that willingness to, to want to help. So I think they're really attacking the uh, mature market because this is the greatest generation, right? Ever served in World War II, trusting, rebuilt this country. And so kind of high integrity individuals, so almost more, uh, more not suspecting of it because they're, they're just targeting. So be careful. Lastly, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. I had an old uh, professor in college that used to have this, he put his arm up like this and it was called the ain't right meter. And we talked about projects and he'd say, it doesn't sound right. It, if it's your conscience, you know, and it ain't right. Well, it, it probably isn't right. So please just use common sense or call somebody, have somebody that you can call and bank that off of. Some other best practices, guard your financial <coughs> info. Like I, like I said earlier, don't ever give out your, your bank account info unless you just have to, but guard that info. Shred stuff that you're not currently using. Uh, that just makes it all that much harder. Please watch your credit report. Does anybody check their credit report on an annual basis? It is provided to you for free. You can do it online at annualcreditreport.com. If you go to freecreditreport.com, they actually charge you, so it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> um, watch your credit report and then look at your bank statements. When, when fraudsters get an account number, one way or another, they usually don't go out and buy the Lexus. What they'll start with is a piece of, you know, some bubble gum at a convenience store to see if you're paying attention. So if you see a charge in a different city or something you haven't done, that might be your first indication. It might only cost you 25 cents to find out that, that somebody's got the account number. So, so monitor the bank statements if you can. Lastly, have, to, have a trusted advisor. I'm not telling you to go to First Financial Bank. Go to your banker, go to a CPA, go to an attorney, have somebody that has a vested interest in your money and your, as a friend and as a client so, so that they're watching out for your assets. For you. Have that trusted advisor, have somebody you can call when some of these situations might pop up and go, does this sound right? What's going on here? So those would be my tips on that. And then if, if suspected that there actually is fraud, first call the police and then call the bank. We're gonna work with you. We'll shut things down and get it reactivated very quickly so that losses are minimized. So, you know, First Financial is trying to fight this problem in all of our communities. As Mark mentioned, we're from Hereford down to Beaumont. So we're all across the state, but we can only say so much. So please, I'm enlisting you, please go tell your community, tell your friends and loved ones about what's going on out there. And then we're happy to come out and talk. This is an ongoing effort. So if, if, if you want me to come talk, if you want any of our employees, speakers to talk in any of our markets, please just let us know and we'll make it happen for you. Just like Vivian did. Um, we are actively monitor <coughs> employ, uh, customers accounts. If we see a, account of a lady that's always written checks and then it changes to electronic and it's just drawing all those funds out we're gonna we're gonna make some phone calls and investigate that we actually have an award that we give out to all of our uh, employees to catch fraud and as sad as it is there's almost one of those awards every day uh, this week there's been one every day because we're catching fraud somewhere in our bank every day and so it's it by giving those awards out, we're able to kind of explain what's happening, so it educates us, and then it recognizes that this is something that we want to promote. So hopefully your banks are doing that. If not, come see us. We're right over here off Keller Smithfield. Um, again, community relationship. We, we have a good relationship with local law enforcement. Chief Hafner over here in Keller is excellent, and he's on board with this with us. Uh, we've worked with the U.S. Secret Service. Uh, and we continue to try to just expand our, our team uh, footprint as we draw in more people that, to keep continuing to talk about this.